Hello, hello. Uh, today I'm reviewing the AM VR facial interface for the Oculus Quest 2. That's my Oculus Quest 2. There, and um, and this is the bracket. And um, yeah, so why would you want this bracket? Well, um, initially, when I first got my Quest, which, um, you know, quite honestly, it's only been a few weeks, but I've been loving it. And I can see I've quite heavily modded it already. And um, this is the original Oculus Quest 2 facial interface. You can see, you know, it's, it's okay with uh, the foam on there. I didn't like the foam, I found that was a bit itchy, so I ended up adding a silicon cover, which I thought did a good job at improving comfort for me. Also, obviously, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a barrier against sweat, so it repels the sweat, which is great. The only problem with this is uh, when it's on there, it creates a complete seal. There's no light leakage, which is very good. However, um, it contains the heat. It really holds in the heat. And I and I found um, basically that the, the lenses on my Quest 2 would immediately mist up and I'd have to take it off, wipe it down, use it for a bit, mist up and wipe it down. So a couple of wipes of the lenses and I was okay. But what it didn't do is um, it didn't relieve the problem of the ambient temperature within the visor being you know, hot, hotter, you're playing on a hot day or you're playing some, you know, vigorous VR games. Um, it was just something that you notice and it's just, you know, it just makes it more clammy, much more uncomfortable. So that's the reason why this thing exists. Well, partly one of the reasons um, is because it includes these vents. So if we do comparison, you can just see there's a, you can see the design there and you can see we have these uh, vents in there and it just allows the headset to breathe and it makes an awful lot of difference. I mean, it's an immediate difference. Um, and that's why this is a great upgrade if you like your active VR gaming. Um, you can see it also has a um, this nose uh, guard on there to let me get this back, back on there. Sorry, uh, just to uh, it, and it basically removes. It doesn't completely um, uh, uh, get get rid of light leakage. There's a tiny bit, but it's not a lot uh, compared to say this one where on the on the you know just on the stock quest facial interface there's just a ton of light leakage and you can look down you can see the floor you know this if you use this and you can just see everything um, if it bothers you then yes you want to kind of cover it up with something like this if it doesn't then you can you know you may not worry about it and this actually comes off which is kind of cool it's a, it's a silicon piece which uh, just fits on these couple of pegs so that's quite good um, uh, the other thing this has an advantage over the original Quest uh, foam padding is it's using pleather. Uh, it's also softer as well. It's, it's got some memory foam in there and it's really, really soft, which is a bit nicer than that. But um, it's thinner, which does mean um, it does increase the field of view by a small margin. It's something I can, you can tell. It does improve the field of view. And if I take um, this off for the moment, as you can see it's, uh, it's just... Uh, it's, Velcro and it easily goes off on there. So we have these two pads, and if I put them up to each other, you can see the difference in the thickness. And you can see that one's very, very thin. That's the one I'm using currently, and you've got a slightly thicker one there. But even this thickest one is it is actually you know thinner. It's softer and it's thinner than the uh, original Quest one. So there's a couple of advantages of using this is it does um, it's better for the field of view and of course it is being a, a pleather material it does repel um, sweat which is very good for wiping down. Um, but it's not absolutely perfect this this system um, but I'm okay with it but if you look at the Amazon reviews people will complain about a couple of things and one of the things is it's orange and it's also not a perfect uh, light blocker and I might be able to demonstrate this with uh, just a torch with just a simple torch and I'm not sure if it will show up it's a bit light outside so I'm not sure if it shows up but yeah you can see there's a bit of a glow of the light there and um, the problem is if um, um, this is it's less of a problem if you're just using say lights in your room um, but if you have a bright window and it's pushing in light on to the side um, it does cast I noticed it casts a 
slight ring on either side, depending on which side the light is uh, coming in from. And um, it's only noticeable in dark contrast um, sort of like uh, scenes. So it's not all the time and it's not, I wouldn't say it's faint, so it's not a massive deal. Um, that's something I've only just noticed because um, um, I normally play um, in a room where it's just like normal lighting or just you know, not, not anything coming directly through the window. So um, that may be a problem for you if you're just using, you know, in, in the evening you'll be fine. Um, and the other thing is, when you look, when you're actually uh, looking through the lenses and just looking normally, even when you don't have that, like I said, you don't have that kind of, when it's uh, say in the evening and, the, and that light isn't casting on the lenses, in your peripheral you can see a bit of that orange and you can just see there. If you look far left or far right, you can see a bit of it. So that will depend a little bit on which of these you use because of the thickness of the, obviously this uh, material will push it out or pull, or pull it in with this and you'll, no you'll notice it more when you're using the thicker pad than you will using the thinner pad. For me, I'm not looking that far left and right, so I would say I don't really notice it, but some people might be distracted by it. It really depends on you, it's gonna be subjective. But I have to say, it's not like a huge amount, but you can see sort of like, um, you know, it's a bit like that. You, you sort of see just the edge of it, and it's there, there is something there. It's strange why they made this in, uh, orange um, it should just be black because that would have been far better and of course like I said you know it's not you know it, it does let light light in a little bit so um, yeah you can see it as kind of a, an orange glow I guess as well which is a it's kind of a strange thing it doesn't bother me but you know it could bother some other people so it's worth mentioning since it's not perfect um, the other thing I will say is um, if you're using the original elastic strap um, using this thinnest one is not a great idea because it's uh, it's far too thin and I'd say even this one is probably a little bit thin when you're using the elastic strap because you know the way you use the elastic strap is you have to kind of crush your head don't you with the you know you have to pull it in to make it fit and stay in place you have to use it you have to be quite tight and um, it wouldn't necessarily be the most comfortable um, type of um, you know feeling uh, compared to say the original one which is a little bit more thicker so do bear that in mind but if you're using um, like I am a third party head strap that's absolutely fine because on say this one my um, MVH Studios uh, pro head mount um, your your face isn't crushed it sort of like rests against your face and this works really well because I'm now enjoying um, just increased field of view because of the I'm using the, well for me I'm using the finish pad because it's quite comfortable using that um, and I have tried that as well and that's perfectly fine as well but I've been experimenting between the both of them and um, for the moment I'm going to continue using the thinnest one but it does depend on what sort of head strap you're using whether or not I think these are actually going to be suitable for you so do bear that in mind you know not everyone's going to like this and it will largely depend on how you are you know mounting you know what sort of head mounting you're using. Another thing I will mention actually this thinnest one because it's, um, um, this may actually be a problem also for some people, um, and even on this type of head strap that I'm using, which like I said, it works great for me. If your IPD is like super close, um, when you have, when, you're, when your field of view is brought in, when the visor is brought in using this finished pad, you're gonna find your nose is likely to be hitting that when you sway left and right. So. Not necessarily great uh, face padding um, if you have um, a narrow field of view, uh, sort of IPD, but on the widest setting, which I use, I'm okay. It just about clears it. If I shake my head a lot, I can definitely feel a tiny touch, but it's not uncomfortable, so I'm fine with that. But yes, um, and you'll find that the slightly thicker one may do the trick, it might be better. But even so, I think, you know, I'm being honest, being honest here, if you've got big nose and it, you know, you may find that this isn't good enough either. So yeah, be wary that um, it's not necessarily gonna be a perfect system for everyone. I'm, ha I'm happy with it and it's good for me. Um, the other thing that you do get with this kit, are, uh, and I'll pull it off, I'll pull one off anyway, you get these extra little wing things. And um, that's actually quite a clever idea. Um, and it works definitely with the finished one, it's, I use it with that because 
when we put this back on there, it if you have a uh, a narrow face, and I wouldn't say I've got like a particularly narrow face, but um, using the thinnest pad, I find that um, when I move my head around using the thin pad, um, I can, there's a, there is some sway of the headset, a little bit of sway. It's not too bad, and I can I can live with it. But when I've added these, and one thing you can do is you can just you can wedge them in further or further out depending on how much um, you know thickness you need. I find that um, then produces a nice seal on the sides, and I'm getting virtually no sway anymore. It's really good. I'm moving around in sort of fast moving games, and there is very little movement, which is kind of important. So that works well with that. Um, I don't remember it ever being necessary of that one with the with the thicker one, I think it does the job. But I'm kind of liking using the thin one because it just works for me, but it really is dependent on, like I said, depending on what type of head strap you're using. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really, I'm, I'm happy of using this and I'm gonna continue, and I will continue using it because I uh, find it does a good job for me. But yeah, um, I have to say, it's, it's one of those things when we mod on our Quest 2s, you know, some, you'll see people, you know, um, on both sides of the fence for all these types of, um, you know, these types of um, uh, modifications that some people think they're great, some people hate them. And yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to say if you're going to, you know, like all of the characteristics of, you know, of this. Um, I wish they just did that on black and I'd have been fine with it. Although, like I said, the orange doesn't bother me, but I can see it bothering other people. But the difference that it makes with the vents in there is massive. And, um, you know, I, I wished they just did something in that because it's just in the mold, isn't it? They could have easily done something there and it wouldn't have changed anything other than improved the actual uh, uh, Quest 2. So, yeah, so a really clever idea. And I'd say, yes, if you struggle with, you know, feeling the heat or misting up of the lenses, this will do a great job and fix the problem for you. And, I, I, and to be honest, if you find these are too thin, you can buy the VR cover um, sort of uh, facial interface padding, uh, which is a lot thicker than this, and just pop it on there because it is just Velcro, and it'd work really well with this. Obviously, it increases the cost of what you're paying for the, you know, all these modifications and how you're setting up your Quest too, but. At the end of the day, you know, when we uh, changing, you know, changing all this sort of stuff on the Quest 2 does make it more comfortable, makes it more usable over, um, over, you know, over long sessions. And I have to say, it's something you kind of have to do. <laughs> you know, it's hard to avoid it, isn't it, really? Um, but yeah, I have to say, with my the combination of this face pad, um, this um, head strap, and battery on the back, excellent. Really, really happy with it. I'm loving it, the Quest 2 at the moment. Because it just is, you know, all these sort of little mods I've made has improved, um, you know, the, the feeling and the, of the, the Quest 2 makes it more comfortable, increased field of view, less heat uh, build up, you know, you can't really go wrong. So, yeah. So, okay, guys, well, that's my review for this the AM VR facial interface. Um, yeah, I hope you found it useful. And uh, yeah, take care, stay tuned. I'll be back with uh, more videos very soon. So, uh, until next time. Bye-bye.